Hey guys, Sam here from CG Candy, and I just want to show you how to create a quick shader that you can use to create Fresnel reflections or a, a rim light effect in Maya. So basically we're going to create something similar to this look in Mario Galaxy, um, where no matter where you look at the character from, there's always this white light around the edge of them. So let's talk about how to set that up. So in Maya, if you click on the Hypershade window, um, let me just drop this down. You can see my setup right here. It's really small. It took me about five minutes to make. And um, without doing any tweaking, this is the effect that we're getting. So again, no matter where I look at this object from, it's going to have this white on the outsides of it. And I could create a cube real quick put a bevel on it, put a bird on it, and, whoops, forgot to apply the shader to it. And there we go. Looks a little strange on the cube, but you get the idea. All right, so how do we set this up? First thing we want to do is just assign a new material. Um, if you want reflections, use a Fong. If you don't, you can use a Lambert. Um, I'll use a Fong so that I can show you how to set up the reflections as well using the same trick. All right, go to the Hypershade window and we want to, I can get rid of this. I don't like working with nodes, so. I'm going to find my new Fong, Fong 2 for me, might be Fong 1 for you. Hold down right click and go to Graph Network. Now this will clear out my window and leave only my Fong in here. So let's start plugging some things in here. So if you look on the left here, here's all of your different utilities. We want to go under the tab that says Maya, click on Utilities, and scroll down to the handy dandy sampler info node. That's what we want to use. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to determine the facing angle of the camera that you're looking at the object through and use that to determine where the highlight is. So it's a little technical but you don't really have to worry about that unless you want to. All right, with our sampler info and in Fong, we need one more node to make this happen. So on the left here again, look for 2D textures and pick ramp. It's by default, it's set to vRamp, which is what we want. So that's good. Um, now we only need for this right now, three, or sorry, two colors. So get rid of this middle color by hitting the little X next to it. And let's change the top one to white and the bottom one to black. Now, as you probably know, in Maya, when you're using a lot of things like reflection or luminance, um, black is a value of zero and white is a value of one. So wherever we have this white, we're gonna have our rim light, and wherever we have black, there's gonna be no luminance. So, okay. So now we need to tell this ramp to be used by the sampler info node. So middle mouse click on that sampler info, drag to the ramp, and this window will come up. Go down to where it says other. All right, so we're looking for this bottom value called facing ratio. Click on that. And for the ramp, since we use the V ramp, we want to connect it to the V coordinate. So Right here, grayed out, it says UV coordinate. There's a plus sign next to it. Click that and click V coordinate. All right, we're almost there. Click close. Now let's middle mouse click and drag the ramp onto the Fong's incandescence. I was saying luminance earlier. That was my mistake. I've been using cinema lately. So let's make sure that we've applied this shader that we've created to our objects and hit render. Now, as you can see, I have these values backwards, so it's having the opposite effect. Um, my mistake. Let's go back to the ramp 
and just flip these colors. We can just drag them down into the right place. All right. Now, as you can see by this preview, we're getting the effect we want. But right now what's happening is the white incandescence is basically washing out the object entirely. That's because the fall off is too great. So if we slide this black one down, you can see that we're controlling the amount of rim light we're getting. Um, so if we look back at our reference photo of Mario, it's pretty small on here. So let's try something like that. That looks pretty good. Okay, and now if we go to Fong again, we can give it a color like Mario has red. Looking pretty good. He also doesn't really have a specular highlight, so just for the sake of this, I'm going to get rid of that as well. So I'll go to my material attributes and turn down the specular color to black. All right, let's see what happens when we render that. Cool, that's what I wanted. Now my render settings are really low, so let me just throw those up for better preview. And looking good. All right. We got what we wanted. So the next thing I want to do is show you how to use the same exact shader that we've set up, but use it for a different purpose. So now we want to create Fresnel reflections. If you're not sure what a Fresnel reflection is, I'm probably not the best person to explain it, but basically the further away from the point that you're looking at an object, the less reflective it is. So it's the same effect as this. When I look straight at the middle of it, right here, it's not going to be very reflective. But as I get to the edges, it's going to be more reflective. Um, let's go to Google real quick and, and get some images of this. Whoops. So here's, an, here's a good example. If you look at the middle of this image, it's not very reflective around the edges it gets more and more reflective. So that's what we want to create. The first thing I need is something for the image to reflect so that we can make sure um, that we're getting the effect that we want. So I'm going to create a plane. Scale it up. Whoops, hitting wrong buttons. Drop it down and I'm going to copy that image that we just saw because I'm not very original and I like to steal ideas from people. So let's go ahead and assign a Lambert to that floor. And in the color channel, I'm going to pick a checkered pattern. Now if I hit six, I can see that previewed. And I'll just move my square down. Why not? All right. So let's assign my new sphere a Fong. Now, by default, a Fong is 50% reflective. So let's go ahead and render that and see how it looks. Now, as you can see, we're not getting that effect before we've done anything. Um, it's just as reflective here as it is where it gets to the outsides. So we're going to use our sampler info to create some Fresnel reflection. All right, back in the hypergraph, let's right click and hold down on our Fresnel reflection shader and hit graph network to reframe it. We'll zoom out a little and again let's create our sampler info node and our 2D ramp texture. Once again we don't need that green value and let's create our black and white values again for 0 and 1. Let's hold, this time let's hold shift and middle mouse click and drag onto the ramp, the sampler info onto the ramp and hit facing ratio, drop down UV chord and hit V chord. All right, so now we want to connect the ramp into reflection this time. So click on your for now reflection and it will open up the window over here and let's drag ramp four into uh, reflected or sorry, reflectivity. All right, perfect. Now I'm going to change my 
Fong's color to black just to make it a little more visible. Or actually just a really dark gray, almost black. All right, let's see how it worked. Perfect, we're getting the effect we want. If you look at the Fong now, in the center, whoops, in the center it's not very reflective and then as it gets to the outside it's more reflective. So if you want to tweak this, let's say you want the, ob the overall object to be less reflective. Um, what you would do for this is go back to your, um, right, you can right click on for now ref reflection and hit graph network, click on our ramp and in this case white is 100% reflective so at the edges of my object it's 100% reflecting so anything less than that is going to be a percentage so if I slide it down here it'll be about 50% black will be 0% so let's go a little less than 100% because most things are not that reflective unless they're chrome hit render and there we go that's how to create a for now, reflection in Maya using the sampler info node. Thanks a lot, guys.